passage number seven. Let's bust out that timer. Make sure you've done it already. And we will go for it. Three, two, one, boom. Okay, market functions, elections, voter turnout, market research, market research, voting. Okay, so politics, economics, something like that. Social sciences for sure. Um, so let's see. What is that X and Y that the author is talking about? What's sort of important? All right. Baltimore and San Diego are two cities that employ these on-cycle local elections. These on-cycle local elections. And their local turnout rates are at 60% and 76% respectively, with Baltimore increasing from 13% from the previous off-cycle election. Illustrating, here we go, the effectiveness of applying market research principles to non-market functions. Okay, so that seems to be the point, saying, hey, you, you know, this this is effective. That's basically the point of the passage. And it's effective even in non-market functions. And, uh, and that's basically the point. So um, when it comes to increasing uh, local turnout rates, um, apparently using on-cycle elections lead to increasing those rates. And that's what we know. All right. So one solution that has come out of this way of thinking, out of this way of thinking, I wonder what way that is, is that many local elections are held on dates other than the national elections. This added date causes a point of friction, causes a point of friction in the minds of voters. Recognizing this principle, holding local elections on the same dates as statewide national elections would remove that point of friction and increase local voter, voter turnout. Okay, so that's a bit more specific about the process. So um, you identify this point of friction, you remove it, and by removing that point, you increase the local vo voter turnout. Okay, got it. All right, and apparently that is some way of thinking that the author apparently supports. And I'm b guessing that that way of thinking is using market research principles to mar non-market functions. Um, when ideating solutions can become useful, okay? This lack of voter turnout results as common as voting is, local voters continue to diminish. This seems to be a shift. Um, so I'll say that one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So I'd say that this maybe is where the first shift in tone is. All right. All right let's pause. So again, we're talking about diminishing local voter turnout rates and using market research principles to improve those rates by removing points of friction, such as, you know, having it be on different dates as the national elections. Okay. So why is this important? Why is local voter, voter turnout rate so low? Why does it need improving? Why are market research, like, what, what, what does it mean to have market research principles? What is this way of thinking? There's a lot of questions that I have. Just by the very nature of us being citizens of the United States, okay, so there's a bunch of context. We have certain powers which enable us to enact social change at a local, national, even international level. Among these powers are blah, which is blah, blah, which is blah, blah, which is blah, which is blah, and blah. And of course, voting, which is the most commonly used civil power. As common as voting is, local voter turnout rates continue to diminish. Okay. So, um, let's see, um, that's definitely part of the shift in tone, let's keep reading, so low voter turnout is usually attributed, that's another setup, to political disengagement and the belief that voting for one candidate or another will do little to alter public policy, right, and then it gives some examples, so, um, where's that shift in tone though? Um, so, so this seems to be like, this seems to be a common belief, like what, why it's attributed, like so it's attributed to political disengagement, the belief that voting for one candidate or another will do little to alter public policy. How does that connect with the conclusion? Um, basically, so is it really, is, is this really the problem? Like is this really the, the, the reason why um, this voter turnout rate is so low? Because over here they're talking about how just changing the date literally skyrocketed the lo local turnaround. So I, I feel like it does connect. I feel like this is not really what the author believes is really this, the, the problem. 
So okay, so nationwide only 27%. Uh, so we looks like we were right here. Nationwide only 27% vote. 27% uh, over here. In Los Angeles, turnout was at 20%. This lack of voter turnout results, okay, so here's why it's important. So this results in a city which has policies that may be vastly under un, unrepresentative of the majority. That is to say, a relatively small number of voters determines how local governments distribute the almost $2 trillion that local governments control. Um, that's not important. Uh, in some places, that means that politically active conservative voters disproportionately sway the vote, while in others, politically active um, liberal voters disproportionately sway the vote. In any case, the more a more accurate depiction here we go of democracy in America suffers. Okay, so um, so that's good. So we have a bit more of uh, an understanding of why this is important. Because hey, if you have low voter turnout, then you're not going to really represent the city um, accurately. Um, when ideating solutions to the problem of low voter turnout, the field of market research can become useful. Okay, so this is sort of, you know, again, in contrast to sort of uh, here, we're kind of seeing now what is the author's solution. The job of a market researcher is to conduct research about the underlying needs of consumers, which ultimately govern their behavior. Okay, so market researchers, so we look at the needs that govern behavior. In the context of a business trying to increase user retention, for example, this means understanding the points of friction that users face, which ultimately cause them to stop using the product altogether. Okay, so how does that relate to politics? In the context of politics, you could apply the same principles. You could apply, that's very, very casual, sort of from the author's point of view, the same principles of market research to identify the points of friction that lead to citizens low use to voting. Okay, so that's what the author's consideration is of how you can approach solving this problem as opposed to just saying, well, they're just disengaged and I guess they believe that voting is not important. Um, this, this is saying that, uh, well, maybe there's just some points of friction that are, that, that are causing us this, you know, uh, people to stop using votes altogether, right? Just like consumers stop using a product, they stop using voting because of friction, not because of a dis, you know, a, a disengagement, um, or you know, believing that it doesn't doesn't that doesn't work or something like that. Interesting. Okay. What attitude does the author have toward voting? So again, not not really about the main argument here. So it's it's pretty sort of neutral. Uh, when trying to decrease litter rates in America, what would be the best approach? Um, so the best approach would be using this way of thinking where you identify points of friction and then remove those points of friction and uh, yeah. So create a voucher program or voucher that is redeemable for a small amount of cash for every ounce of litter collected and turned into participating locations. Um, my brain is getting confused. Conduct research of the ways that litter may be difficult to dispose. Um, that's better, yeah. Like, how is it difficult? So, that, what's the friction? That's much better than A. Uh, hold fun group events for volunteers to clean up litter on the side of highways. No, that's not as good as B. Increase the, f the fine to further disincentivize the public from littering. Um, yeah, so it's about researching the points of difficulty or friction. Imagine that this Balt that Baltimore's local Vernon Turner's plummets the next on cycle election. What would be the most likely reason? So the author would probably say something was difficult. So, um, so Baltimore saw rising population growth. Um, I don't know if that would cause a difficulty in the in terms of the point of friction for voting. Um, political disengagement increased due to dissatisfaction. No, so it's not about political disengagement. That's not the author's thing. Able to see publications of fertility of local voting went viral. Um, again, it's not really about the belief in the in the in the fertility of voting. Um, locations of the local election voting centers were different than those of statewide elections. So yeah, if the locations are different, that's a point of friction, which would be what the author would believe. What was the role of civil disobedience? Uh, so that's just something over here to talk about the powers that we have to enact social change. So. Um, yeah, so illustrating social change. What is the conclusion? 
Um, let's see, holding local elections on the same dates as statewide and national would increase local vote. So that's not necessarily the conclusion. The conclusion is that yeah, market research is is um, effective. So uh, principles of business problem solving can be successfully applied to governmental problems. Uh, so yeah, it's better than a, a citizen should be aware of other ways that they can en enact social change. Nah, the value of a single vote is greater with local elections. Nah, so it's definitely B. All right, so just over the ten minutes, good. Now we look at it again, sort of a prototypical social science type of passage, economics passage, some sort of a causal or correlated relationship, some sort of a thing that's important. Um, pretty, pretty much a neutral tone, not really saying, you know, that this stuff is bad, just saying that this is the way that the author would kind of approach it. Um, and, uh, yeah, so a little bit subtle, you know, uh, the first paragraph is basically just a bunch of context. So you saw that I basically kind of skipped it, uh, skipped over it. Um, and uh, as you can see, I, I, I was able to handle this problem pretty easily um, because the, the process is the same you, st you still know where it is you know I know that it's in here I know that it's sometime before the first shift in tone so it's somewhere in the context which means it's somewhere in the first paragraph so then the process is okay you locate it then you said okay it's going to be supporting whatever the claim is before or illustrating the claim before and so that that helps with that um, you know in terms of the conclusion you know, the, the highlighting these bits of the, these certain phrases here that, uh, you know, the effectiveness, right? Effectiveness meaning um, something works, right? So um, that's going to be something that the author is concluding that, hey, this thing works. So what, what's wor what, 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 what works? What is so important? And it's being able to apply market research principles to non-market functions. And that's it. So we start there. That's where we sort of base our prediction of where the author is ending up because that's where the author ends up. You know that the author gets there. How does the author get get there? What's relevant? Now we have to figure that out. And so we know that this stuff is not necessarily so relevant. Um, but uh, as we get to the second paragraph, you know, it says as common as voting is, it starts to diminish, um, and that it's l and that low voter turnout is usually attributed, right? So this was sort of the thing that indicates, okay, I'm about to get a shift in tone, and. Um, and it doesn't necessarily go into the shift in tone right away, which is a really interesting kind of look into this passage. So uh, the shift in tone kind of says, um, it kind of, it kind of starts here, and then it takes a quick tangent to tell you why it's important to study, and then it finishes here, where it says, "Hey, you know, low low voter turnout. It's important to study." But I don't know if it's necessarily because they don't believe that voting is going to do nothing. I think it's maybe because um, there's some points in fr of friction that people face, which ultimately cause them to stop using, uh, using uh, uh, voting, right? And so, and so that sort of navigating that is really important. So being able to kind of get in a high level, zooming out a little bit is important. And, and how do you get more comfortable with that? Again, these these phrases that I'm highlighting, they're, they're, I'm highlighting them as I read to help me stay engaged with this passage, looking out for certain things. So these are all sort of common setups for shifts in tones. And, and when you don't get that sort of come down, it's like, you know, you build it up, here's a setup, but, but you never really came back down and kind of concluded or made, made your thesis. There was a break here. And navigating that, being able to zoom out at a high level, allowed me to stay calm because I felt like, okay, well, I know that the author ends up here anyways. I know that at some point the author is going to talk and introduce market research principles. When does that happen? Well, it doesn't happen here. It doesn't happen here. It doesn't happen here. It happens here. So I know that it, the shift starts here. The setup starts here, takes a quick tangent, and ends up over here. That's how I was able to kind of handle that. And so it's really important, again, to have the skill where you understand what is, where does the author end up and then where does that shift begin. And that way, even if, the, even if the shift in tone doesn't begin and end in the same sentence like it usually does, you're still going to be fine to navigate the up and down. So the attitude, again, so you have a 
foundations of comprehension here. You have a reasoning beyond the text over here, talking about a new situation of littering. You have a new information here about the next election, so that's reasoning beyond the text. You have the role of the civil disobedience, which is reasoning within the text, scrutinizing why the author used that example. And then conclusion, that's again foundations of comprehension. So you get a good mixture of those three main categories. Um, with economics sort of social science passages, especially when it's not talking about market research principles, if it's not talking about the main point, and if it's talking about some uh, sort of solution in the middle, almost always it's a pro and con, so it's sort of like neutral. Um, when trying to decrease litter rates, what will be the best approach according to the author? So whatever the approach the author used to solve this problem, it'll be the same thing for here. So they, he believes or she believes that you should conduct research to identify points of friction. So same thing over here, conduct research that identify things that are difficult about that process of you know, getting rid of litter. Um, so all the other things have to do with sort of cash incentives or vouchers or social incentives. None of those things are the approach that the author would use, the best approach. The best approach is, again, applying market research principles. So A doesn't talk about market research, C doesn't talk about market research, D doesn't talk about market research. So B is the only one that talks about conducting research. Imagine this thing plummets. So if it plummets, again, because the author believes that these things happen because of a some points of friction, that there must have been some points of friction in the actual process of a voter going ahead and 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 participating in that local voting, uh, local election. So what are some things that could have caused um, points of friction? So again, it's not dissatisfaction, it's not disengagement, it's not futility and l stop, you know, lacking belief in voting. Those B and C, those relate to these usually or commonly held beliefs, that is political disengagement or a lack of belief that causes these rates to diminish. But that's again, precedes the shift in tone, so it cannot be what the author believes. So you have between A and D, and A, you know, I thought maybe A is okay, I guess. I mean, B and C are definitely worse, so A is not that great. I didn't know what the heck was A. So Baltimore saw a rising population growth, so I'm super rationalizing. I don't even need to explain that. Um, but this one says the locations were in different uh, voting centers, right? That would be causing a point of friction, just like having them on the different days causes points of friction. Having them in different locations would also cause points of friction. So that's definitely a bit more supportive than rising population. So if you made sense of A, you rationalized very, very well. Be proud of yourself for that, but realize that that is exactly the opposite thing to do. So MSLR says most support least rationalization, not least support most rationalization. So D is the best answer here. What is the role? Again, we found it, looked at the claim before, and bang, there it is. So let's look at the other answer choices. To instruct the reader on the most appropriate methods. Nope, it's not instructive. To provide a point of contrast between voting and other civil powers. That's okay. I can see how that happens, but that's a bit too much of a rationalization as opposed to just illustrating various methods. Um, to suggest alternative means of influencing policy and decision makers. Again, um, it wasn't really about influencing policy and decision making. All these things are very subjective rationalizations. This is the only thing that has actual sort of direct proof, and especially when it comes to the context of where this is. So among these powers are blah, 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 blah. These lists, um, they're just examples of the powers that we have as citizens to enact social change. So that's the process you want to use to solving those types of problems. And what is the conclusion of the paragraph or passage? Um, again, market research principles to non-market functions. So um, market research principles applying to non-market functions. All right. All right, guys. So um, hopefully there's some good insights there. Again, you know, I think that the biggest sort of hurdle there has to do with when a shift in tone kind of is split in two in that way and the best way to navigate that being to hold the end of the passage in mind and realize that when you begin that shift in tone, you know it has to get there some sometime so you just keep on holding off until you get to that point where it does connect, and it does, it will. Um, it has to. Okay, so if you have any questions, let me know. If not, I'll see you in the next video.